Good morning. Good morning. You, you ever prepare something and come to say something and you feel like it's all been said? That's okay. I, I, I got a couple pieces, but that's left, but that's okay. Because we came here this morning to get something from God, right? Yes, sir. We came to hear something, to learn something, maybe some things we weren't looking for. Well. And it doesn't matter who says it. It doesn't mean better where I get it from. Doesn't matter if I get to say it or somebody else, because well, that, that ain't what it's about. It ain't about well, me. It's about God. It's about His Spirit. I started off with this, because He lives, because we have an answer, because He lives, we have everything we're looking for today. Yes, sir. He anointed us oil with oil and let us bring our petitions before God, and because He lives, we have our answers. Yes, sir. Holy is the Lord in Christ alone. In Christ alone. That's where my answer is. I heard that preached about a little bit already this morning, too. In Christ alone. That's where my answer is. That's where my hope is found. And, and I realize there's a lot of people in this world that they don't have that hope. And sometimes we as Christians, all right, amen, if we admit it, every once in a while we kind of lose sight of that hope. Every once in a while we kind of get, get in, our own, in our own head and... and, and, and we try to figure things out on our own, and, well, and we lose sight of the hope that God gives us. And it's easy to do. That's the flesh. Well, but that's why I think someone said an advocate with the Father. We, we have a way to the Father. So on the sign you, saw, you see out there, it says, uh, souls matter. And, what, and, and why is that important? What, what's so important about my soul? Well, it says in the beginning, God created everything. Yes, sir. He created all the plants and the animals, and he created man. And he gave dominion over all those things. He gave it life, and he breathed into man the breath of life. He didn't, he didn't, didn't say he did that for, for all the animals and the plants. Right. It says in Genesis 2-7, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. And then he took a man and he, and he, and he pulled a rib out and, and made woman. I know that's right. And we've been blessed to have a couple weddings here recently. Amen. Joanna Tressa. Amen. Mark and Lynn. Amen. That's all right. And, and that's a beautiful thing because that's, that's what God put together. Yeah. That's what God made. And when we, when we look at salvation, if we look at what, what God wants to do in our soul, and that's what marriage is to model. As, as the church is for Christ, so the bride for the groom. And the bride and the groom they work together in that way. As, as the groom says, I'm going to lay down my life for this woman, for my wife. Well, I know you've probably heard me say this before, but I have to repeat it. When, when you say lay down your life, people think of... of uh, superheroes and Marvel comics and, and all, the, all the movies where you've got the, the star who has to, you know, in the end he's got to die for whatever the cause is. I guess, I guess, I guess in the comic books they, they, they take it where he somehow comes back to life, but in reality in, in, in the movies when, when there's something kind of more re sort of realistic the hero dies and doesn't come back. Well, if we as men as our husbands lay down our life in that fashion, it's done and over. But we, the life we lay down is every day. Amen. The life we as men lay down for our wife is every day. It's, it's, we, it's as we live it. All right. Sorry, I'm moving from uh, the message to, to marriage counseling here. But, but we need to hear that every once in a while. We need to realize that the life we lay down, because Christ laid it down for us. He rose again. And he lives with us every day. That advocate with the Father, that Holy Ghost that's in us. We talk about the soul the spirit, that's life. A soul, soul means life. You know, we have a life in our flesh, but the life that is in us that lives eternally is our soul. That is yes, our life. Sir. Our theme for October was, is, for this month, is the fruit of righteousness is a tree of life, and he that winneth souls is wise. Ken Avellino preached on, on, on that two weeks ago. You know, the the power in living godly and the blessings that God has for us when we live in, in, in what God gave us. And uh, Armand George talked about being fishers of men. What's that all about, being fishers of men? Why? 
You know, that, that's, that's what we need to be doing. Because that's what's important. That's, that's, you know, we, we can go out, we've got all kinds of organizations in the world that do good things. They do things for the flesh, and, and those are needful. But what about the soul? What are we doing for souls? Are, are we looking at souls, or are we looking at people? And, and there's a balance, because we as Christians, I mean, you know, the, the first and great commandment is to love God and love others. You know, Jesus talked a lot about meeting the needs of others, physical needs, and those need to be met. But if we lose sight of the soul, then, then we've lost sight of the end game. We're just taking care of people. Wow. We're just taking care of the flesh. Wow. Say that again. If we lost sight of the soul, we've lost sight of the end game. Because what, what good is it to gain the world and, and, and lose your soul? What is it, you know, it's one thing to feed someone, and it needs to be done. Because sometimes you need to feed someone to show them you care about them. So you need to, to meet their physical needs in order to let them know you care about them. And then you can get to the soul. Our theme for this sermon is from 1 Corinthians 9, 19-22. For though I be free from all men, yet have I made myself servant unto all. There's a key right there. All, the apostle, made himself a servant unto all. Where, where do you get that example at? Christ made himself servant. Our examples. That I might gain the more. And unto Jews I became as a Jew, that I might gain the Jews. To them that are under the law as under the law, that I might gain them that are under the law. To them that are without the law as without the law, being not without the law to God, but under the law of Christ, that I might gain them that are without the law. To the weak became I as weak, that I might gain the weak. And I made all things that I... I am made all things to all men that I might by all means save some. Yes, sir. So I'm, I'm going to come back to that scripture again, but about the soul. This is our life that lives eternal. Do we consider it? Our life that lives eternal. Do we consider it when we make our decisions every day? When I get up in the morning, do I consider my soul or do I consider um, well, I'm hungry? Well, do I consider my soul or do I consider, let's see, what am I wearing today? Do I consider the soul of others, souls of others as I can? Good Lord. By what I put on, by what I eat, by what I do, by where I go, by the attitude I put on. I mean, by considering, by, by getting up and seeking God first thing in the morning, yes, we're considering our own soul. And then next we're considering somebody else's soul because if I'm not ready to, to meet somebody, I haven't got my soul right. Because that's, that's the eternal thing. You know, we, we've, we've got an obligation Amen. to let our light shine. So soul, life. Romans 6, 11. Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. How does that happen? We heard Pastor Malcolm preach a, he preached a little bit already this morning on that. Talking about being born again. And it starts back in the tank. That, that's, that's our watery grave. Buried with him in death and raised to a newness of life. That's where we take on the Spirit of God. That's where we take that on. That's where our, our soul becomes clean. We, we become alive again. Because what happens to our soul when there's death? We're not alive. We're not truly alive until we're born again. The Old Testament had to bring an animal. And its life had to be sacrificed for our sins continually. We no longer need that. We no longer have to have priests... Men go before God, before the, before the ark, and before the Spirit of the Lord for our sins. We can do that every day. And we have that. He said the advocate with the Father, you know, the priest. We have the fact that Jesus died and rose again and ascended to heaven. He said, I go to prepare a place, but I will not leave you comfortless. I will come unto you. We have that every day. Amen. And that's for our soul, for our, our spiritual every day. Matthew 10, 28. And fear not which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. So there, there's an eternity. And, and I like to say that our, our flesh, you know, we, we make decisions in the flesh every day. What we do, what we say, where we go, what we entertain, what we allow, what we don't allow. Wow. Our soul pays the price for that. Well... What's in control? Is, is our spiritual man in control? Is our spiritual man... What's 
taking charge or is it just the flesh? Because it's easy to do. I mean, the flesh, it's easy. I mean, we, we know what feels good. We know what we like. We know what we enjoy. We know what conversations we'd like to have. We know what people would like to be around. We know what the flesh likes. Amen. Even when it's a detriment to the flesh, we, we seem to enjoy it. Well. But we also have a spirit. And that, that's where the break has got to be. That's where we have to make our atonement to God. We have to make our, our peace with God. And that's just by speaking with him. That's by talking to him. That's by learning his word. And we've got to be jealous of our soul. We've got to be jealous of uh, being clean because he cleans us up. We've got to be jealous. How many we got in here that are either military or prior military? You know, how many of you got a really nice suit or a nice dress that you like that you, you never want to get anything on? Oh, come on. I got more hands than that. Somebody's got to have a nice, you got a nice pair of shoes that, oh, that yeah. you, you, you don't want to get them dirty. Oh, yeah. Right. So you got that nice pair of shoes on. You got your nice, your dress whites on. You got that pretty dress. You got that brand new suit. And, and you're going outside and there's a big mud puddle. You're going away, far away around that thing as you can. Yes, sir. You, you're, you're, sitting at, you're sitting at the dinner table. You're going to, uh, we'll say Cracker Barrel. And, and, you, and you got a big pile of pancakes with syrup and butter and, 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 and what do you do? You get that napkin out and you tuck that thing in and you make sure you don't get that brand new tie dirty. Yes, sir. So what are we doing for our soul? Well, what are we doing for our life? How do we protect that? Armor of God. I know we've had studies on that. The shield of faith, the breastplate of righteousness, the shoes, our feet shot with the gospel of peace, the, the helmet of salvation, our sword of the spirit, all those things. How do we get those? We get those by praying, by studying, by, by finding ourselves in the presence of God, find it, finding ourselves knowing the word, mm. sword of the spirit, praying, letting God fill us, Lord Jesus. the word, understanding God's word. Mm. Those are things to be jealous of. And we're talking about the soul. You, you ever find yourself burdened with something and you kind of wonder, how, how did I get here? You ever find yourself carrying something and, you, and you're wondering, you know, what's this all about? Well, I'm not saying the things of God aren't heavy. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about things that we find ourselves doing and wondering, is this what I should be doing? Matthew 11:29. 29. It says, take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly of heart. And you shall find rest unto your souls. A yoke is a way of doing work. If you... If, you put an animal and you put a yoke on it, it's doing work. And sometimes you're yoking two animals together. Sometimes it's just one animal and, you, and you, you know, you've got a plow or a wagon or something you want to hitch up to that animal and that's with a yoke. And it's a burden. It's something that, that it's, it's a weight. It's something that, that it's, it's a means by which to do work. You can't pull that wagon. You can't just put a rope around that animal's neck and expect them to you know, choke them. You know, that's a, a way to, for the animal to work. Well, Jesus said, take my yoke and learn of me. Now, there, there's a key right there. I, 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 it's easy to gloss that over, gloss over that. Learn of me. Yes, sir. How do you take up upon the yoke? Well, you've got to learn what that is. You've got to learn what Christ wants you to do. Learn what the Lord has for you in your life, or you're going to put the wrong yoke on. Well, for I am meek and lowly of heart. Jesus said, I am meek and lowly of heart. When we do work, what do we want to do? Look what I've done. Be proud of it. And, and, and that, that's a good thing. We, we, you know, we tell our kids to, to be proud, but, but, but where does that start, start and stop? Where, where does it become, it's just me versus giving glory to God? Well, and sometimes we pick up a load that we want to carry. I mean, you look at strong men that are lifting the weights. You know, they, they, they want the cameras on them because they're showing off how much weight they can carry. Well, that's just for man's glory. You pick up the weights to, to, to build the muscles. That's for our own vanity. And, and I'm not condemning anyone that does that. I'm just drawing the, the parallel between the two. You know, life is good and we should enjoy it, but in the end it's vanity. It's good for a man to, to, to benefit from his labor, but at the end of the day it's vanity. So what am I putting on me that God wants me to carry? Yeah, that's the spiritual things. That's the things. And we're talking about souls matter and saving souls very specifically. May we 
try many things without finding the right purpose. If we seek God, we find his purpose. Matthew 16, 26 says, For what is a man profiteth if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? And what man shall give in exchange, and what will a man give in exchange for his soul? Again, there are things in the world that's good to have. We need a house, we need a car. But what will we give in exchange for our soul? When, when do we get to the point where God's not in control of it anymore? Because God wants us to have a house for a bit. He doesn't want anybody to live on the streets. He doesn't want anyone to, to, to have to, you know, be an undue burden to get things done. He, he, he gives us things. He, the scriptures talk about prospering and, and, and God giving us gifts. But the context is what, what will we give in exchange for our soul? And what will we get to, to gain that next thing? You know, it's one thing to have a, have the, have a car. It's the next thing is, all right, okay, two cars. All right, I got to work an extra couple hours to get that second payment. Oh, yeah, then we're going into debt. That's a whole other Bible study there. Living within your means. Uh, and I'll just, I'll, just well, leave, I'll just leave that one alone for now. <laughs> Pastor Elix preached a message here a few months back, and the title was, What Really Matters? And he, he referenced Acts after the, the day of Pentecost when, when God's Spirit came down and they spoke and people heard them in their own tongues. And I'm going to pick this up in Acts chapter 2, 43. And fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles, and all that believed were there, were together, and all, had all things common, and sold their possessions and goods, and parted them to all men as every man had need. And they continued daily with one accord in the temple, and in breaking bread from house to house, did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God and having favor with all people. Having favor with all people. There's a key there. Because sometimes when we're talking about preaching the gospel and having favor, it doesn't always well, fall in place. I hear the scripture in the Old Testament that blessed is a man when your, his enemies are at peace with him. Amen. doesn't mean you don't have enemies. But when you're doing things right, God will put you at peace with people around Amen. you. Amen. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. There's two pieces there. Well, actually three, but add into the church such as should be saved. And it's one thing to add people to the church. You know, we get people to come in, sit in the chairs, you know, sing in the choir, you know, help us clean the building, help us cut the grass, come and, you know, play an instrument, um, whatever it is. That's adding to the church. But he said such as should be saved. Now you're adding to the body of Christ. You're not just adding to Christian fellowship ministers. You're adding to the body of Christ. And there's a difference. And sometimes that's, I, 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 know, I know the audience I'm talking to, and I know I've labored in ministry with many for years, and, 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 I, and I trust every one of you, but sometimes we as human beings, it's easy to lose sight. And, and that's from the pastors all the way down. That, that's Amen. the four elders. Amen. If we're not careful, we could lose sight of that. Yes, if sir. not careful, the deacons could lose sight of it. Yes, sir. Bible study teachers and, and everyone in between. It's not about Christian fellowship organization. It's about the body of Christ. In this organization, we have to make sure that we build this organization in a way. It's why we're doing our, our CFCMI, the 101, 201. That's our starting point for just an introduction into what we do as a ministry and what we do as a body of Christ. It's the foundation of, of, of the Bible and, and salvation and getting to know God and being in tune with God's, what God's Spirit wants us to do. And in the message of Pastor Elise, he talked about, he kind of highlighted, you know, the early church as they were waiting for the return of Christ, they realized that that's what they need to be doing every day of their life. Amen. And that's winning souls. Now, what does that look like? Winning souls. And does it mean, as I just touched on, does that mean bringing them to church? Not in entirety, but... Yes, bring people to church. I like to encourage it like this. When you, when you meet somebody and you're sharing, whether it's just the way you live, people see it in you, they see a difference, whether you get to share with someone, whether God gives you a word for someone. And it's one thing to invite them to church, but I, here's what I encourage. Invite them to come find what you have found. 
Because then you're not inviting them to a building, you're inviting them to an experience. You're inviting them to find the truth, the peace, the joy, the salvation that you found. Without even going into a, a big long Bible study or preaching at them, the fact that you have something in your life that they can see, the fact that you have something in your life that they want, and you're telling them where to find it, that's huge. That's bringing people to Christ. Does it mean just preaching to people? Standing on the corner, waving your Bible to people? Does it mean just talking to scriptures and having a, having a scripture answer for everything everyone says? You can, wear, you can wear people out like that. You might even make some enemies. But on the other side of that, know your scriptures. Know your Bible. Find your time in the Word, even daily. Because what that does for you is when, when, when you need to give an answer to someone, the answer you give comes from Scripture. You may not break out chapter and verse, but the thoughts, the ideas, the things that you have, now they're from Scripture. And now they can be led by God's Spirit. And now you have an answer for them. Yeah, it's biblical. But you're not quoting a Scripture verbatim, word for word. Now, there's a time for a place for that. And God will show you when that time and place is. Because there's sometimes when you, when you quote a, a verse, you know, word for word, people know that, that where that came from. Amen. And there's a time and place for that. And then there's a time of just conversation to lift up God and say, you know, the Bible talks about this without just giving them. A, you can give them, a, how does it go, Pastor Lee? You can give them Bible study without giving them a, giving them a Bible study? Yes, sir. Yeah, Pastor Lee is famous for his one, one scripture Bible studies. <laughs> and, and, and those are good because you get the point across. God gets his glory. Not me. Sometimes it's a warning. Sometimes God gives us a word of warning. Now, it doesn't mean we have to stand up in front of our wa and wag our finger and say, thus saith God, you're in sin. Unless God tells you to do that. That's another story. Well, but in general, if God didn't tell you to do it, you, you better be sure God told you to do that if that's what, if, if that's what you're going to do. But generally, sometimes, you know, people will be in a way of life, and, it, and it's as simple as saying, you know what, there's a better way to live. But you can't do that unless you've got a testimony with them already. You can't tell them there's a better way to live if you're not living it. Amen. I can't tell them there's a better way to live if they don't see it in me. Come if on. they see me doing the same thing everyone else is doing, and I say there's a better way, better way to live, it's like, I don't see nothing there. Amen. Testimony's important. I'm just looking at the clock. And this, this is going to be, there's some, there's some really some points that I want to get to, and, I, and it shouldn't take me much longer to get there. As I put up on the marquee, I, I, Souls matter, because everything in life matters, but souls, you know, it does, it, we place an importance on so many things in our life, where we came from, the food we eat, the car we drive, the house we're in, the job we have, the prestige, you know, the, the moving up in the, uh, the corporate ladder, our physique, the way we look, and, and we identify ourselves with those things. How many times you get in a conversation with somebody and how do you identify with each other? You usually talk about where you work, the job you do. And that's where we identify ourselves. And, and that's part of a conversation. I'm not condemning that per se. But I want to drive a point, and that's wh what do you identify with? Do I identify with my hometown in Southern Illinois? Yeah, there's a time and a place for that. Because sometimes I can really, as Paul said, you know, I become all things. But sometimes, if that's just how I did identify myself, then God can't break me out of that to do something else. Again, it's a tool. But if that's how I identify myself, as, as just a, a country boy with some kind of a crazy accent somewhere between redneck and hillbilly, if, I, if that's how I identify myself all the time, if that's how I view myself, then I'm, I'm, I'm putting God in a box. Yes, sir. Um, if I identify with, you know, I mean, we all got our foods we like to eat. We got, you know, some people like their tasty cakes. Well, <laughs> some people like their fried chicken, some people like their steak, some people like whatever it is. Whatever your favorite meal is. I keep, I keep asking for sancocho, but I don't get it, so. <laughs> and that's a Puerto Rican dish. You know, and, and people identify with, you know, different ethnic, you know, they, they want to go to their ethnic food. And there's nothing wrong with it. But if that's the only thing you identify yourself with, again, it's a tool. You know, if... if, if, if if my wife and her family have someone they want to minister to and, and they're Puerto Rican, they find a Puerto Rican restaurant to go to. 
But that's not where you're going to take everyone and, and, and force everyone into your way of life. Well, well, well. Mm. All right, I'm going down, a, going down a path here. But I mean, whatever it is, I identified some specific things, but what do we identify with? And what do we label ourselves as? Because that's the way we are, where we're born, how we're raised, and, and, we, and we keep ourselves inside that box. Become all things. If I, if I keep myself inside that box, th then I can't become all things to all people. We'll go back to 1 Corinthians 9 again. Paul said, For though I be free from all men, I have made myself servant unto all, that I might gain more. Paul's free from all men. He doesn't owe anybody anything. He's got a duty. He's bound to serve God. But because he wants to be used, he wants to gain more, he makes himself a servant of all. Unto the Jews I became as a Jew, that I might gain the Jews. To them that are under the law is under the law, that I might gain them that are under the law. Now there's a cue for here and now. Sometimes we come across people that are Jewish. You start talking to them about New Testament, Old, Old Testament, you lose them right there. Because they, they don't consider the New Testament the Bible. That's right. They don't consider the Old Testament an Old Testament. They call that the Bible. Yes, sir. Now, you start there. And if you understand the Old Testament that we call it, if you understand that part of the Bible, if you understand all of that history, and you understand the prophecies, mm -hmm. and you understand the law, then you can talk to someone who's Jewish, and then you can show them but this prophecy and this here. And this here. What does it all point to? It points to this other chunk of the Bible that we, and now you can talk to them about Jesus. And that all comes from having a testimony with them as well. Because they see a God in your life. And you can relate to them and take all the things that they already know and point them to Jesus. Amen. To them there without the law, verse 23. Being not without the law to God, but under the law of Christ that I might gain them that are without the law. Gentiles. You know, we, we, we weren't raised under a law the, as, as the Old Testament law. We weren't raised that. I mean, we were taught the, old, taught the Ten Commandments, but the, Le, the Levitical, you know, Leviticus and all, that, all the laws and the rules, you know, those aren't the things we were brought up in our cultures. You know, I mean, in church, we hear about it and taught about it, but it's not our culture. But, but what is the law of Christ? That's a beautiful thing there. Because we do, by thing, we, do we do by nature the things in contained in the law through the Spirit of God. Amen. If you're listening to the Spirit of God, you're going you're to do those things. You're going to stay within the law of God. And, and really, the, even bigger than that is you could live under the law perfectly, but yet not be under the law of God. Well, well, well. You could live the law, letter of the law perfectly, and still not be under the law of God. Because the God's Spirit will tell you what to do and what not to do. And you can find a way in the law to justify a lot of things. But sometimes God shows you this is what you need to do. This is where you need to abstain from. This is, this is where you need to be. And disobeying that law in the Spirit is much worse than disobeying any written, piece of, written words on a paper law that were given in the Old Testament. But that's an easy thing. And, and, and as I say those words out loud, that could be scary. That could, be, that could almost sound like a, I'm kind of preaching judgment on somebody. But, but the reality is, I, I can't judge you on that. Because I don't know what God speaks to you. I don't know what God has told you in your heart that you need to do. It's like when Jesus talked to the rich young ruler, ruler and told him to go sell everything that he had. That may not be what he told, tells somebody else. That's what he needed because his, his riches were more important than God. He, he told the Lord... You know, I've done all these things. He wanted to justify himself. It's like, well, here's what you need to do. What is God telling you? And, and then on the other side, what, what, what do I do? To what, how do I justify to God when God tells me this is what you need to do? And I say, God, but I've done this, Amen. this, this. Yeah, but I want you to do this. Amen. Now, I'm going to go back to the scripture in Matthew, which I read. Take my yoke upon me. My burden is light. God's not going to put more on you. That, you know, there's different scriptures we use for that, but that's, that's where I get God's not going to put you on something on you you can't handle. His yoke is easy. His burden is light. God's not going to give you a burden to carry that you can't handle. The other scripture we try to lump into that is that, that, that 
There's no temptation taking you, which is common to man, but he will provide a way out. Those are two different things. God always provides a way out. But God's yoke is not, not burdensome. It's not hard to carry. What makes it hard is when we, we, when we try to carry two yokes at once, maybe. Well, we kind of try to mix the world and mix the, yeah, I've, I've gone from preaching to on, on, on evangelism and souls to, to something else. But it's important because I can't evangelize, I can't tell somebody about God if I'm not listening to the Spirit of God. I, I can't get that right if, if I'm not, if I haven't got this right with God, I'm going to have a hard time going out and share with somebody. You, you ever go to share with somebody? You ever go to tell somebody something you, and you got something on your heart you want to give them and God says no? Even though you know it's the right thing to say, God says no because you're not ready. Because you haven't yielded to him and God's not given you that to give to him yet because you still you need to yield to God. Let that, let that sink in for a second. I know it's kind of awkward, but well, let's, let's sink in. Sometimes you go to share with someone, you know it's the right thing to share, and God holds you back. Sometimes you need to get right with God, because you may not be ready for what comes next. Well, well, well. Verse 22, to the weak became I as weak, that I might gain the weak. And I am made all things to all men, that I might by all means save some. Because souls do matter. Souls matter than anything else, more than anything else. And that's why we've got to do everything we can to get to the soul. And it starts with me. I've got to be ready. My soul's got to be right. My soul has to be in tune with the Spirit of God. Then I have to be in tune with what God wants me to do, whether it's to meet a physical need or it's just to give him a word from him. I have to be ready for that. So how, do we, how do we do that? How do we become all things to all men? How do you become all things to somebody that you don't know? What did you say, Brother Alex? Get to know him. That's right. Get to know him. Brother Alex nailed it right there. Get to know him. If you don't listen to somebody, you don't know him. Amen. If you walk in thinking you've got it all figured out, if I walk in thinking i got it all figured out, guess what? I'm going to get it wrong. Unless just God just gives me a word specifically to say. And sometimes he want, God wants to get to know people. How do you know they've got a physical need if you don't get to know them? Now, here, here's a conversational piece, and this is something that's learned. Salesmen learn it well. You, you, ever, you ever have somebody trying to sell you something and they get you talking about yourself? Yep. That does not come natural. That is a learned thing. And, and if we want to get to know people, that is a learned thing that we need to do as Christians, as soul winners. I had this guy, we came to my door and had this Kirby vacuum cleaner. And he said, I want to clean a car before you. Okay. This guy could care less about selling me anything. He, could have cared, he was not doing anything, but he, 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 he wanted to get to know me, asked us questions. He didn't talk about himself at all. And he really didn't even talk about the product he had. He just showed it off. That was the only thing he did. He didn't try to sell me nothing. He just basically, here's what this machine can do, and wanted to show off what it could do. And, and other salesmen, you, you get with them, and, and, and they don't talk about themselves. They keep you talking about you. And that's not a sneaky thing. That's not a, you know, a dishonest thing. That's how you get to know people. The best salesmen don't try to sell you anything. You know, as in, in business, a lot of us have been in sales and may not even realize it. You know, I've been in sales, and I've learned the best sales that I could ever make is because I met, found out the needs that the person had or the company had. Or the business. I found out the needs and then met the needs. Of course, that's what I'm selling. But if I'm just trying to sell you, hey, here's this list of things. Hey, you need one of these, need one of these, need one of these? No. You get to know the people. You get to understand what they're about. And you find out what they need. Then you can meet their needs. And in business, it's, you know, you're selling a product. You know, I, I, you know, people that buy things, you get the right salesman. Yeah, he's never sold me anything, but he's always made sure I, I got what I needed. Well, and we're not selling anything. We're giving it away. It was given to us freely. We give it away. But if you don't, and I'll go back to that. It's a learned thing because we, we as, as human beings, we like to kind of one-up each other because it's good. You, you, you tell a story and you tell what you've done. Hey, well, I've done that. 
And then it's just a back and forth, and you wind up trying to one-up each other. And sometimes that's a fun time to do. You get a bunch of guys doing that, it, 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 it's a blast. But when you're talking to someone, you want to learn to get to know them, listen. Get them to talk about themselves. Get to understand them. Because if, and even if you don't like what they're saying, you know, you can learn something. Even if you don't agree with someone, you can learn something from them. Maybe what not to do, but you're learning something. But sometimes you learn things because we, we, we hear one thing and, we, and, they, and they start talking about some kind of a religious doctrine and we don't believe that. Uh-oh. And it's easy in our flesh. Oh, we just shut that down. We turn that off because we just believe that everything in context with that is going to be wrong now. Well, words are deceiving. I mean, you talk about the Trinity and, and you ask ten different people what Trinity means and you're going to get ten different answers. Well, you talk about salvation. What does salvation mean? You ask ten different people in the world, you're going to get ten different answers. Well, or there is no such thing or whatever. You know, really get to know someone before you judge on the words. And we're talking about winning souls, becoming all things that might, I might save some. Because souls matter. Because without taking the time to get to know them, you're, you're not getting anywhere. And make sure you show off the God in your life. And, and that, that on his face seems like, oh no, I'm not supposed to show off. I'm supposed to be humble. I can't do anything. Well, there's a scripture for that. Matthew 5, 16. It says, let your light so shine before men. Let your light. That's the God in you. Like the guy with his vacuum cleaner. He, he, all he wanted to do is show it off. He wanted to show what he could do. Show what your God can do. Do it by how you live, by how you speak. You can go ahead and leave that up for Pete. Thank you. So let your light shine before men. Why? That they may see your good works. Yes, that they may see the things that you do. Why? Because it's God that does it in you. When you get that perspective right, it's okay to let people see your good works. Amen. Now, you're not showing yourself off. But if God gives you a talent, use it for his glory and let people see it. Don't hide it in the closet. Well, and why do we do that? that? And glorify your Father which is in heaven. You do what you do for God, and God is glorified. When you get it right, when, when, when my soul is right, I can glorify God. My soul is wrong, I'll get up here and sing. and That's all it is. I can make some noise. People could say how good of a song you sang, how, how well you did this. But my soul is not right. That, that's all it is. But if I get it right, then I can, then I can minister to souls. You know, your, your words, you know, it, you could be speaking the same words, and... And they just kind of drop. And, you know, you, you know you just said scripture, but, but is God blessing what you're doing? And it's about where, where, where am I at? Is my soul ready? So it's about souls. It's about being whatever people need to get to the soul, to be able to minister to the soul, to be able to share with them, to bring them to the place where they can find what you found. And I'm going to leave you with one final scripture. It's in 1 Peter 3.15. And it says, But sanctify the Lord God in your heart. So you get it right first. And be ready to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and with fear. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Thank you.